What's up guys? We're back with another educational video and this week we're talking about red meat and the risk of disease. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment for the algorithm. So a new study that's getting a lot of play in the media came out in Nature. It assessed the effect of unprocessed red meat consumption with various diseases like type two diabetes, breast cancer, heart disease, and some various other things. It got a lot of play because the conclusion of the study was basically that there was either no evidence or just weak evidence for unprocessed red meat causing or being associated with the risk of these diseases. There have been a lot of studies coming out assessing the effects of red meat on disease. One of the problems with trying to assess the effects of a certain food on disease is you can't do a 20 year human randomized control trial. It's not a reasonable expectation. What we're left with is basically epidemiology where we either look at a population of people, say like Italians, and their risk of death versus say Americans, and you look at their red meat consumption or any other food and look at how those correlate together. Or you do what's called cohort studies, which tend to be a little bit better because you're assessing the same people. It's not just cross-sectional, it's longitudinal. So you're following them for one, two, five, 10, 20 years. There's no intervention, but you're looking at how much of certain foods did they consume and what was their incidence of disease. It's a little bit better in that each person is kind of their own control but there is no intervention and there is no randomization. And one of the downsides to epidemiology is many times people who consume more of a certain food, they don't just do that in isolation. These are wrapped up in a bunch of other behaviors. So this study was a meta-analysis where they were combining a bunch of different studies that looked at the effects of unprocessed red meat, which I think is important because processed red meat does appear to have a pretty significant association with certain disease risk. So they looked at unprocessed red meat. And one of the things they did was in the statistical methods, instead of trying to fit a dose response in what's called a log linear manner, which basically log linear assumes that say going from zero to 100 grams of red meat should have the same effect as going from 100 to 200 grams of red meat, that there should be some kind of linear risk effect. So in this study, they did not make that assumption. I don't wanna to get too much into the statistics of it, but it had more freedom in the assumptions it made in terms of what the dose response was going to look like. And so they also did different ratings based on the study, based on the bias. And one of the other things they did for was they controlled for various other lifestyle factors like smoking, BMI, and some other things, which is really important because people who tend to eat more red meat actually tend to smoke more, they tend to exercise less, and they tend to have a lower amount of fruit and vegetable consumption. So basically in this study, they found weak associations of red meat with breast cancer, colon cancer, type two diabetes, and they found no association for ischemic heart disease and also no risk of hemorrhagic stroke. This paper has gotten a lot of press. Obviously the anti-meat crowd has gone crazy over it, saying that it has to be wrong and whatnot. And then the carnivore crowd has gone absolutely ballistic saying, see, this proves you can eat as much meat as you want and it's not gonna harm you. And I'm here to basically tell both those groups they need to shut the hell up. What this study showed was there was an association of red meat consumption with colorectal cancer, I believe breast cancer and type two diabetes. The associations were very, very weak. And these associations tend to be really inconsistent from study to study. And the absolute risk, I'm gonna read this off, the increased risk of colorectal cancer, breast cancer, heart disease, and type two diabetes were 6%, 3%, 1%, and 1%. That's pretty low. Now again, it could be a risk, and we're talking relative risk too, which is important to understand. So relative risk, if something, for example, says it has a 10% relative risk, that's not like your risk is 5% and now it jumps up to 15%. That is your risk is 5% and it increases by 10% to 5.5%. So when you're talking about a relative risk of 6%, if your risk of cancer is 5%, it goes to an absolute risk of 5.3%. So people who are kind of in the anti-meat camp might say, well, 
that's, you still shouldn't eat meat because even in this study, which is obviously biased, insert sarcasm for people who don't understand it. Even in this study, they still found an association with some of these uh, negative health effects. Yes, but they're also, especially with colorectal cancer, they're not correcting for every confounding variable. So for example, fiber and fruit and vegetable consumption. We know that fiber and fruit and vegetable consumption have very powerful effects on reducing the risk of colon cancer. So, for example, there was a study done a few years back in 100,000 people where they looked at red meat consumption, but crossing that with also fruit and vegetable consumption. And what they found was that if you got fruit and vegetable consumption high enough, there was no effect of increasing red meat consumption on the incidence of cancer. On the other side, you got the carnivore folks who are like, see, you eat as much red meat as you want, it's not gonna hurt you. That's not what the study says. The study says that it looks like there is a small increase in risk. Now again, you cannot covariate out every confounding variable. Is there an increased risk? It's possible. What is my personal opinion? My personal opinion is when it comes to unprocessed red meat, I don't think there's much of a risk as long as all your other lifestyle behaviors are healthy, such as exercising, eating enough fruit and vegetables and eating enough fiber. Many people who eat high amounts of red meat often replace their fruit and vegetable consumption with red meat. Carnivore advocates, if you really want to advocate for red meat, you should also be advocating for fruit and vegetable consumption because in the studies, it shows that if you get fruit and vegetable consumption high enough, red meat consumption doesn't seem to be an issue. Now again, I don't think that's necessarily an effect of red meat. I think it's more of an effect of people just aren't eating enough fruit and vegetables when they're eating a lot of red meat. My recommendation based on this study is basically what it's been. I think red meat is fine in moderation, especially unprocessed red meat, but you need to make sure that you're eating enough fruit and vegetables, not because they're necessarily canceling out something bad that red meat does, but because they're just healthy overall. Whereas studies on red meat, there's quite a bit of disagreement amongst the studies whether or not it causes cancer or heart disease or these other things. In the studies on fiber and fruit and vegetable consumption, there is no disagreement in the studies. There is a linear effect of increasing fiber intake on decreasing the risk of mortality, cancer, and heart disease. For every 10 gram increase in fiber, there is a corresponding relative 10% decrease in the risk of mortality. So for all of you out there looking for these longevity hacks and you're sitting in the sauna and then cold baths and then a bunch of other stuff, the real longevity hack is probably fiber. All right guys, if you like the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you enjoy these research breakdowns, make sure you check out my new research review reps. Every month we assess five different studies in health and nutrition and we break them down in a way that's palatable and easy for anyone to understand. So if you're interested in signing up for that, make sure you click the link in the description and I will catch you next week. Hey.